Today's obituaries are brought to you by Moss Service and Hansville Funeral Home. Funeral services for Paula Ann Hollis Handley, age 69, of Hansville, will be at 3 p.m. tomorrow at Coleman Funeral Home Chapel, the Reverend George Weeks officiating, Coleman Funeral Home directing. Ms. Handley passed away Tuesday at her residence. Visitation will be 2 to 3 p.m. tomorrow at the funeral home. Funeral services for Melba Reeves Ligaber, age 90, of Cullman will be at 2 p.m. tomorrow at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. The Reverend John Busman will officiate interment in Cullman Memory Gardens. She will lie in state from 1 to 2 p.m. at the church. Cullman Heritage Funeral Home is directing. Arrangements are incomplete for Philip Duane Beavis, age 53, of Michigan, formerly of Hansville. Hansville Funeral Home is directing. Mr. Beavis passed away yesterday in Michigan. Those are our obituaries for today, brought to you by Moss Service and Hansville Funeral Home. Currently, there are 206 registered sex offenders in Coleman County that are allowed to operate on the honor system. Within four weeks of taking office, they will be checked monthly by every deputy. I want every one of my deputies to know where the sex offenders live in their communities. And as they are traveling up and down the roads protecting you, and they see a bicycle in a registered sex offender's yard, they will pull over and check and see why there is a child at that house and if there's a potential victim. At Premier Bank, we are very proud of the long-lasting relationships we have with our customers. We'll go almost anywhere to meet your banking needs. Overwhelmed by home refinancing offers from telephone solicitors and direct mail advertising and then find you're not qualified for a specific plan? The Mortgage Center, a hometown lender, compares the rates from all home loan lenders and the qualifications of the various government programs to find a plan best suited to you. The Mortgage Center helps Coleman County people purchase and refinance their homes. This is Pat Moody. Call us today and let us tailor a loan program to your specific needs and requirements. While Washington liberals like Obama and Pelosi continue to attack Alabama families and values, conservative leaders like Ed Henry are fighting back, championing pro-life legislation, standing strong against Obamacare, and keeping taxes low so we can create good jobs. Ed Henry, the conservative champion we need in Montgomery. Meet the KitchenAid 36-inch induction cooktop. It might just change the way you cook. Induction technology heats the pan and not the cooking surface to offer you a new level of precision, speed, and energy efficiency. Nine settings give you different levels of heat to achieve precise temperatures and amazing responsiveness. Water boils in just seconds, making this the fastest to boil induction cooktop available. The KitchenAid 36-inch induction cooktop. Four years ago, I stood here and told you about our struggling economy and system. We needed a change. Today I have good news. The economy is coming back, the job market is getting stronger by the day, and we're taking steps to ensure our education system is strong and secure for the future. Now it's time to build on those successes. I'm asking you to join me in continuing to move our communities forward. I'm Max Buttrell, and I'm asking for your vote.
Bank presents today on two, and people are watching us on Charter Cable in Cullman County, watching us on the internet, channel2cullman.com. You can follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, and of course we archive the programs at channel2cullman.com, or you can go YouTube and watch us just about any time. Are you ready for a holiday weekend? I am so ready. All right. So the weather should be perfect. Let's start with the weather for today. Our weather brought to you by Mitch Smith Chevrolet. Make the switch to Mitch. Here's the weather almanac for the 23rd of May in Coleman, Alabama. The average high is 83, the average low is 65, the record high 95 just a few years ago in 2010, the record low 45 in 1954. Sunset will be at 748, sunrise tomorrow morning at 540. There's the satellite picture, a little bit of rain here and there around the country, but I don't think any major storm activity as we head into the holiday weekend. There's the satellite picture over the southeast. And here's our forecast for today. It'll be another sunny day, a high around 89. A clear tonight, low of 62. More of the same tomorrow. Maybe a slight isolated thunderstorm in the afternoon, just a 10% chance. High of 86. Sunday, 87. Monday, Memorial Day, 89. 90 on Tuesday. Upper 80s on Wednesday, mid 80s on Thursday, with a slight chance of rain each day. Typical weather as we head out of May and June coming just around the corner. Tawani was entertaining yes. this last week. What time did you get home yesterday we or last home night? About, I don't even remember, 4.30? 4.30, 5 o'clock? Yesterday afternoon? Yeah. Well, that's we not too bad. No, it wasn't too bad. We had a girl that was um, still in high school, and her baccalaureate was last night. So okay. she requested to please be back in town for that. So, okay. so we, were, we got back that afternoon. So well, we uh, for people who might have missed our program last Friday, where were you? What was, was going on? I was Pigeon Forge touring with the Wallace State Jazz Band. Mm -hmm. um, they asked me to be their, their vocalist um, early in the semester, so they asked me to come on tour with them, and we performed at... Dollywood, we performed at the Wonderworks Museum and at the Titanic Museum. And so we got to just take in some of the attractions. We spent the day at Dollywood and we went through the Titanic Museum. We rode in this um, giant helium filled tethered balloon. So we were 400 feet in the air and it was, you know, view was gorgeous, but I don't like heights. So <laughs> it, was a, it was a little scary, but it was fun. That would so, be a beautiful view. Oh, it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. It really was. I, was. I was impressed at how much I liked it because that's not my, I'm not a, I'm not an adrenaline junkie, but that was fun. <laughs> Well, great. Good to have you back. Yes, I'm glad to be back. Let's see. Uh, do we have our Facebook friend or do we have another slide coming up? There Let's we go. Our candidate forum for today will feature the invited candidates for state senate, and they'll be coming up here in just a little bit. Facebook friend of the day. Let's see who our it's friend is. Stacy Howard, and she likes Auburn and Jack's Western and Outdoor Wear. So thank you very much, Stacy, for being our Facebook friend. We're going to give you that large barbecue sandwich from Mad Dog Mike's Famous Barbecue. Just come by the station and pick up your certificate on your way. We will continue with more of Today on 2 and look at our merchant ads right after this. There's stuff around your house, but we don't make stuff. We make ovens, dual fuel, double ovens, and they bake so evenly that now delicious is something you can depend on. We only make things for one room, the best room, your kitchen. We're devoted to it, and you can feel it in everything we make. Nobody knows the kitchen like KitchenAid. Overwhelmed by home refinancing offers from telephone solicitors and direct mail advertising and then find you're not qualified for a specific plan? The Mortgage Center, a hometown lender, compares the rates from all home loan lenders and the qualifications of the various government programs to find a plan best suited to you. The Mortgage Center helps Coleman County people purchase and refinance their homes. This is Pat Moody. Call us today and let us tailor a loan program to your specific needs and requirements. As your sheriff, I will have an open door policy for every citizen of Coleman County. I believe it is important for every citizen to be able to voice their concerns and needs to the sheriff of Coleman County. Because as law enforcement officers, we get so focused on law enforcement, we forget to listen to the people. And if we will listen to the people of Coleman County, 
then they will help drive the sheriff's office in a positive direction for their needs. At Premier Bank, we take pride in serving our community. We respect our customers, and we've won awards for our ethical conduct. We're motivated to do all we can for you, and we're interested in your banking needs. We're efficient, safe, and sound, and our relationships with our customers are second to none. At Premier Bank, we put the customer first. While Washington liberals like Obama and Pelosi continue to attack Alabama families and values, conservative leaders like Ed Henry are fighting back, championing pro-life legislation, standing strong against Obamacare, and keeping taxes low so we can create good jobs. Ed Henry, the conservative champion we need in Montgomery. Four years ago, I stood here and told you about our struggling economy, job market, and education system. We needed a change. Today I have good news. The economy is coming back, the job market is getting stronger by the day, and we're taking steps to ensure our education system is strong and secure for the future. Now it's time to build on those successes. I'm asking you to join me in continuing to move our communities forward. I'm Max Buttrell, and I'm asking for your vote. Here we go with our merchant ads for today. And remember the last couple of days when we did the quiz, we had a number of new prizes, mm -hmm. we had new ads. No quiz today, but we'll start again on Tuesday. So okay. watch the ads, pay attention, because we'll have a quiz again on Tuesday. It's my party. Balloons of all shapes and sizes, singing telegrams with Lulu the gorilla. It's my party on 2nd Avenue Southeast across the street from Sacred Heart Church. And Cotton State Barns of Coleman you can buy or you can rent to own. They do carports, play sets, utility trailers, and storage buildings. There's no credit check. You are approved. And they are located on 278 West just past I-65. That's Cotton State Barns of Coleman. Auto Tech, located in the Vinemont area on County Road 1354. They do major engine repair, brake and transmission repair, all vehicles, foreign and domestic. Deb's Bookstore is your hometown bookstore. She is just down the road and browsers are always welcome. Used books are half price every day and new books are 20% off every day. That's at Deb's Bookstore on 3rd Street Southwest in Coleman. Jolly Time Rentals, where fun is always in the air. Licensed inflatables, slides, water slides, obstacle courses, concession equipment available for rent. Call Holly Mullins to book yours today. Grand Point Pharmacy is the original home of the Two Old Goats uh, product line and they say don't let allergies blow you away, get them before they get you and they have all your allergy products available there at Grand Point Pharmacy on Highway 31 North. Alabama sunrooms and awnings, sunrooms and screen rooms, patio and deck covers, awnings, metal roofs, vinyl siding, garages and buildings. If we do it, it's built right. Always call for a free estimate. At the Candle Garden, there's hand-poured candles and over 50 luscious fragrances. They do um, personalized gift items, gift baskets. Be sure and check them out at their new location next to Moe's Barbecue. That's the Candle Garden. Mullins Body Shop. You've counted on them for over 50 years for auto body repair and towing. You still can count on them each and every day. Call Sunny Stacy Beth or Jim at Mullins Body Shop. And the Picking Under the Pavilion series is continuing with their live music June 3rd, 10th, 17th, 24th, and July 1st. It's every Tuesday under the Pavilion behind the Donald E. Green Senior Center from 6.30 to 8 p.m., rain or shine, and it's open to the public. Brown & Company Beverages, where good taste begins. They have domestic, imported, regional, and local beer and wines, ciders, meats, mixes, and gourmet sodas. There we go with some of the merchant ads. And as I mentioned, no quiz for today. We'll show you the rest of the ads after we watch Money Matters, brought to you by Premier Bank. This is Allison from Premier Bank. I want to talk to you today about the importance of dealing with a local bank. With a local bank, you will always be dealing with local people and neighbors. A community bank will have offices in your area, and loan decisions will be made locally. Come by and see us today. Now let's look at the rest of our merchant ads so you're ready to go for our quiz starting on Tuesday. Hair by Loretta. 
new clients get a $5 discount on highlights, haircuts, manicures, pedicures, and waxing. Call for an appointment at 256-790-6681. And the Chesley Oak Golf Course is open uh, 7 to a.m. to 7 p.m. There's an 18-hole golf course, a full practice facility, um, beautifully manicured bent garden, and four sets of trees. The H. Chance Christian Bookstore. Grab it, engrave it, and go. Engraving for wood and metal products now available. Way to go to get a personalized gift for weddings, anniversaries, or graduation. Earl's Body Shop is celebrating 50 years in business. They do large and small towing and local or long distance towing. You can find them on Highway 31 North in Coleman. Pizza Hut of Coleman featuring the lunch buffet, 11 till 2 every day, priced at just $6.49. Pizza Hut located on 2nd Avenue North. And BeFit is a new fitness facility in downtown Coleman. It's next to Renard's Gallery. It's only $50 per month. It's month to month. There's no contract. And your membership does include a personal trainer. That's at BeFit. Mr. Hicks menswear, formal wear, also regular big and tall sizes available each and every day. Mr. Hicks menswear on Compass Way. And the Hansville Drug Stores a blast from the past. They opened in 1925 and they are still serving ice cream treats from the original soda fountain and with that same old time friendly service. There's always great sales at the Hansville Drug Store. Tires for less, more than just tires. They do have Bridgestone and Firestone tires, but they do minor engine repair, oil changes, replace shocks and brakes. See Greg and the guys at Tires for Less, Highway 31. Mad Dog Mike's Famous Barbecue is offering the family barbecue pack for only $13.99, and that gets you a pound of meat, two 16-ounce sides, and four buns, and that's located inside the Berlin Quick Stop. That's Mad Dog Mike's Famous Barbecue. Strawberry Shortcake Blizzard is the blizzard of the month at Dairy Queen. Oh, it doesn't get any better than that. Strawberry Shortcake Blizzard at Dairy Queen. There we go with the merchant ads. And like I say, we'll start our quiz again on Tuesday. We'll be right back and look at our community billboards, birthdays and anniversaries, and give away our prizes. Premier Bank, we're a bit old fashioned. We actually answer the telephone when you call. However, old-fashioned doesn't mean we aren't up to date. With the latest technology, Premier Bank meets the various needs of our customers. Mobile smartphone banking, internet banking, ATMs, convenient offices. At Premier Bank, we have the right products right now with good old-fashioned customer service. At Premier Bank, we put the customer first. Life lived in black and white is not a life lived. Today, I choose color. To see it. To feel it. To be in it. To be upon it. And to live a life surrounded by it. Today, I put on a fresh coat. As Sheriff of Coleman County, I will set a new standard in drug enforcement across Coleman County by using my training, my qualifications, and my experience in working with other local, state, and other law enforcement agencies across the state of Alabama and Coleman County to go after not only lower level drug distributors, but the upper level drug traffickers in Coleman County. And I would like to ask for your vote on June 3rd in the 2014 Republican primary election. Four years ago, I stood here and told you about our struggling economy, job market, and education system. We needed a change. Today I have good news. The economy is coming back, the job market is getting stronger by the day, and we're taking steps to ensure our education system is strong and secure for the future. Now it's time to build on those successes. I'm asking you to join me in continuing to move our communities forward. I'm Max Buttrell, and I'm asking for your vote. While Washington liberals like Obama and Pelosi continue to attack Alabama families and values, conservative leaders like Ed Henry are fighting back, championing pro-life legislation, standing strong against Obamacare, 
and keeping taxes low so we can create good jobs. Ed Henry, the conservative champion we need in Montgomery. Our community billboards are sponsored by Pepsi and Coleman Jefferson Gas. The VFW will host a Memorial Day program in Veterans Park at Sportsman's Lake on Saturday, uh, May 24th at 10 a.m. and they have provided the program schedule for you there if you are interested in there and going there. The Dodge City Lions Club will host a Boston Vet and Rib Sale on Friday and Saturday, May 23rd and 24th. Um, sales will begin at 10 a.m. or at 8 a.m. I'm sorry, today and tomorrow until and they'll continue until they're sold out. Boston Butts are $30 and the ribs are $25 and they are located beside SNS Foods in Dodge City. The Smith Lake Park Memorial Day Festival will also be tomorrow, May 24th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. It is free admission and they have arts and crafts, food vendors, golf cart and bike parade, prizes, putt-putt golf, the swimming pool will be open and they will have live music. That's the Memorial Day Festival at Smith Lake Park. Garden City Church of God Food Bank will be open um, tomorrow, May 24th from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. serving surrounding area communities with God-centered prayer and food ministry. The church is located a half a mile south of Wallace State just off Highway 31. For more information, you can contact Diane West at 256-739-3791. And if you have a community billboard you'd like to share with us, you can email it to us at channel2coleman at gmail.com. You can leave it for us by phone at 256-734-7399 or be our friend on Facebook at channel2coleman. We'd also like to wish a happy birthday today to Bob Kurtz, Larry Holt, Emily Sapp, Katie Albright, Wesley Holsey, and Jacob Adams all have a birthday on Friday. On Saturday, we have Jim Witte, Ron Dunn, and Ellen Klinger. And then Sunday is Jim Faust, so happy birthday to each and every one of you. And they're going to be registered for the chance to win our ice cream cake from Dairy Queen right now. Okay, let's do our drawing for the week and see who wins the birthday cake from Dairy Queen. It is Allie Burleson. Hi. Allie Burleson's uh, birthday was earlier this week. How about anniversaries? Do we have any anniversaries? I think we have a couple of anniversaries. Okay, don't, don't have a slide ready to go. Nice. It is the Hartness, and uh, they Yay. had an anniversary earlier this week, so they win the gift certificate from the Campbell Garden. Now, coming up next, let's check the weather. Brought to you by Mitch Smith Chevrolet on Cherokee Avenue. Beautiful sunny day today, a high of 89. Clear tonight, low of 62. Maybe a slight chance of a thunder shower tomorrow. Otherwise, plenty of sunshine with a high of 86. In the nation, we reward safe driving. Add vanishing deductible from Nationwide Insurance and get $100 off every year of safe driving, which means you could save a lot of Benjamins. We put members first because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation. Nationwide is on your side. One of the most frequently asked questions I receive out on the campaign trail is, why do you want to be the sheriff of Coleman County? Coleman County is my home. It's where I was born and raised, and it's where my wife Susie and I will raise our two boys. And there's nothing more important to me than my Lord and Savior, my family, and my home. And I would like to ask for your vote on June 3rd in the 2014 Republican primary election. Wallace State offers associate degree and certificate programs in Alabama's hottest job fields. Every year this decade, almost 3,800 new workers will enter these fields. Will you be one of them? Be one of us. Get in a Wallace state of mind. That's the projected number of job openings for trained welders this decade. That's the potential salary for welders trained the Wallace State way with the latest robotic technology for manufacturing. Who will you be? Be one of us. Get in a Wallace state of mind.
Four years ago, I stood here and told you about our struggling economy, job market, and education system. We needed a change. Today I have good news. The economy is coming back, the job market is getting stronger by the day, and we're taking steps to ensure our education system is strong and secure for the future. Now it's time to build on those successes. I'm asking you to join me in continuing to move our communities forward. I'm Max Buttrell, and I'm asking for your vote. While Washington liberals like Obama and Pelosi continue to attack Alabama families and values, conservative leaders like Ed Henry are fighting back, championing pro-life legislation, standing strong against Obamacare, and keeping taxes low so we can create good jobs. Ed Henry, the conservative champion we need in Montgomery. Good morning and welcome to the 2014 Candidate Forum for Republican Primary on June 3rd. Today we're uh, speaking with the candidate for State Senate, Paul Busman, and Bruce Whitlock is also a candidate, but Mr. Whitlock has chosen not to attend today. Uh, we'll go right into our questions, and we're glad to have you here with us today. Good to be here. Thank you. Uh, the question is, what are your ideas that support job creation and economic growth, specifically what taxes should be lowered, what training programs are needed, and are existing programs effective in job training? Well, I think the most important thing in Alabama right now is job creation. Uh, you know, if the government's creating jobs, that's not a good thing. That's usually a government job that's not what kind of job we want. Uh, the thing the government can do is we can provide an environment to incentivize companies to come to Alabama. And to do that, you've got to have good schools, you've got to have good roads, you've got to have good health care, uh, you've got to have security as far as crime, uh, and those all play into to this issue. Uh, one of the things that, that is so important is if we can get people jobs, then we automatically fix the Medicaid issue and the prison issue that we have. The more people we have that are unemployed, the bigger those problems get. Uh, when we don't educate our kids the way they need to be educated, they don't, have a, they don't have an option to get a decent job, they fall into those categories where they either are on the services or they end up uh, getting into some kind of uh, uh, criminal issue that, that puts them in prison. So, you know, the things we can do is we can provide good infrastructure. One of the things we've done over the last four years is, is we've provided the largest road and bridge project in the history of Alabama to fix bridges, to fix roads. Uh, the 222 interchange is a prime example of where that money's going. Uh, that's going to be a huge economic boost for Alabama and for Coleman. Uh, and we look forward to those kind of things. But jobs is the, is, is the key to making Alabama work, and I think we've got a good legislature that's, that's willing to do that, and we've got a governor that's out working with us too. Uh, in the job training area, are there any programs that y'all have worked on to, to bolster you know, the, the efforts of getting kids, and, and not just kids, but people that's in the workforce trying to go back into the workforce? Well, one of the biggest problems we've got right now is, is for so many years we tried to push kids into the college funnel. And, and we told our high school kids, you're going to college, you're going to college, and we kept shoving them in that same funnel. And there's many students that don't want to go to college. Uh, there's many students that are much better working with their hands, doing trade work. Uh, and so I think over the last 20 years, we've uh, kind of done them a disservice uh, because we, we decreased the importance of the trades. Uh, and I think what we've done over the last couple of years is to try to bolster and, and pick up that, that trade uh, enthusiasm. Uh, we've put a tremendous amount of money into the, uh, into the career training, into career tech, uh, and I think that can only help. You know, when, when I saw the ad uh, this week that a, a diesel mechanic can make a six-figure income, you know, the kids in high school don't know that. And that's the kind of stuff we need to educate them on. You know, a, a certified welder can make $75,000 a year. Uh, so that's the things that we need, to, we need to encourage them. We need to find what they enjoy what they want to do and we need to try to encourage them and that puts them in the workforce. Okay. Uh, next let's talk more about education. Uh, the Common Core and the Accountability Act uh, also then teacher pay raise and, or pay issues and tenure. But uh, we'll start with the uh, Common Core. Common Core has been a, been a very divisive issue in Alabama uh, and one, one of the problems is it's, it's federally mandated. Uh, and that concerns a lot of people and it concerns me a lot. I don't want the federal government telling us how to 
how to provide education for our kids. I think we've got enough smart people in Alabama in education that can decide what program we need to use, what philosophy we need to use, and what curriculum we need to use. Uh, I firmly disapprove of any information being transmitted on our students uh, to the federal government. I think that's a terrible thing. Uh, and so I've been, been openly opposed to Common Core. Uh, I think we need to have that discussion. I think we need to have that discussion in the legislature and just shoving it off to the side uh, does not fix that problem. And so I think we've got to fix that problem. I think we've got to address the problem and find out what the facts are and, and then make a decision what's best for our kids, not necessarily uh, for the kids of, of, of America. Uh, one of the problems I see is I don't want our children to be average. I don't want ours to be equal to everybody else in the country. Uh, I think our children should be expected to do more and should be expected to have a higher uh, uh, expectations on them and, and that's what I look forward to do is, is to make those challenges to them so they're better than everybody else in the country. Uh, the Accountability Act, uh, tell us what that's done for us or to us. Accountability Act I think is a, is a very good act. Uh, one of the main things that's overlooked a lot of times is the flexibility. Uh, local school systems, if, if they feel like they can do a better job than the mandated state uh, curriculum, they have the option to apply to the state and change that curriculum to fit their, their needs. You know, we, can't, we have to understand that, that children in, in Coleman and Winston County and Marion County are much different than children in urban areas. And there are things that, that we can do in our district maybe a little bit different than they do in, in the urban areas that will help our kids. And so that's one of the facts that, that has been overlooked. Uh, the other issue is, is allowing children to, to move to schools that are, in, that are failing, that have been failing, they can move out of those failing schools. Uh, I firmly believe that we've got one child that we can fix and help in that situation. That's a tremendous benefit. If we've got schools that are continually failing and they have failed year after year after year and, and show no progress, moving forward, uh, to leave those kids in that system is a terrible thing to do to that child. You're automatically telling that child you're going to be on the system or you're going to be in prison because we don't really care about you. And the one thing the Accountability Act did was it allowed us to get those children that wanted to and parents that wanted to get their children out of those environments. It gave them an opportunity to do that and, and I think that's going to be a tremendous benefit over the years. Do we have numbers on how many parents have actually taken advantage of that opportunity? I think last year, the first year it was in effect, I think we had uh, around 100 children that moved. Uh, the, that's statewide? That's statewide. Uh, now we've, we're seeing a tremendous increase in the number of applications for scholarship programs and that's another part of the Accountability Act, the scholarship program. So you may have people that are, are low income that can't afford to go to a private school. Uh, and it's important that we give them the same opportunity that we give people that are, that are of means. And so the scholarship program has taken off uh, and we're going to see, I think, a lot more low-income uh, households being able to, to send their kids to private schools and get them out of these failing systems. Okay. Uh, teachers' pay raise and tenure. Well, teachers' pay raise has been a, been a tremendous issue in this whole election. It's been a tremendous issue in the whole last session. Uh, and part of the problem is we don't have the money to afford that. Uh, you know, I don't, and I don't think most of my colleagues uh, wake up in the morning and say, okay, let's go stick it to the teachers today. Uh, that's just not something we do. Uh, but we have to be responsible with the money we have. Uh, we had $134 million extra this year to spend, uh, and we spent 94 of that on health care for our teachers and our support personnel. And so two-thirds of what we had extra, we put into the to the teachers and the work for and the and the uh, support personnel, to add another two percent pay raise would have cost us another eighty thousand dollars, and we just didn't have that money. Uh, and so we felt like it was best to provide their health insurance without causing them to bring any more money out of their pocket. Uh, and we'll have to just let the let the economy grow and, and the revenues grow. And and I think you'll see uh, pay raises in the future, but we can't do it until we have the money to do it. But the state is spending more per teacher this year than, than they yes. did last year. Yes, we had, like I said, we had, uh, you know, to completely fund their, their health insurance so they didn't have to increase their premiums. Uh, we had to put about two-thirds of the extra money that we had available into doing that. And that's what most teachers asked me to do. They asked me to don't take any more money out of our pockets, uh, you know, provide our health care, and we'll, and we'll do until we can find the resources to, to increase the, the pay. Okay. Uh, do you support or oppose the Affordable Care Act's Medicaid, ex Medicaid expansion? The Affordable Care Act is a nightmare. Uh, 
Uh, and, and most of the problem is, is the fact that nobody understands what they're asking us to do. Uh, and so I think Governor Bentley has been very uh, appropriate in, in, in not expanding Medicaid at this time. Uh, he's asked the federal government to explain to them exactly what they want us to do. Uh, and until we get that explanation, I don't think we can do that. Uh, you know, the other issue with the Affordable Care Act is can Alabama afford it? Uh, you know, we just got to finish talking about the budget for, for education. Uh, the general fund is in much worse shape than that. Uh, even though the federal government will provide 100% coverage for the first couple of years, uh, you know, in a couple of years, we're going to have to start taking a percentage of that. Uh, and we can't afford that right now. Uh, we've got uh, probably uh, 700, 800,000 people on Medicaid right now. Uh, we've probably got another 150 or 200,000 people on Medicaid that qualify for Medicaid that aren't taking it. If those people would come on the system, we wouldn't be able to afford that, much less the increased 300,000 that would come with the expanded Medicaid. So again, it's a, it's a financial issue. Uh, you know, I think we're going to have to be very careful uh, to watch for our community hospitals. Uh, we don't want any community hospitals to close, so there's going to be a little tightrope that we're going to have to walk uh, to make sure that we do it appropriately and we don't allow our community hospitals to, to hurt. The population of the state of Alabama is still just a little over 4 million or so we're, we're looking at almost a fourth of the population yeah. uh, to be involved with that program. And I saw a study yesterday that, that Alabama gets a tremendous amount more from the federal government than we do, than we put in. Uh, and so, you know, when people start talking about let's push the federal government off and let's, let's secede or whatever you want to say, uh, you know, when you look at the numbers that we receive from the federal government, I, I just don't think that's an option. Okay. We're going to take a, a commercial break and want to ask you to stay with us, uh, but to remind, remind you also that today's forum is available for viewing on channel2colman.com and on, on, and on YouTube. I'll spit it out in a minute. Stay with us. As a local auto owner's independent agency, we are dedicated to assisting you in your time of need. We live and work right in your community, and we're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Fortunately, emergencies don't happen every day, but when they do, we're here to personally see you through. For life, home, car, and business insurance, call us, your local independent auto owner's agent today. Overwhelmed by home refinancing offers from telephone solicitors and direct mail advertising and then find you're not qualified for a specific plan? The Mortgage Center, a hometown lender, compares the rates from all home loan lenders and the qualifications of the various government programs to find a plan best suited to you. The Mortgage Center helps Coleman County people purchase and refinance their homes. This is Pat Moody. Call us today and let us tailor a loan program to your specific needs and requirements. Baker Pro Audio and Video is your church sound, video, computer, and lighting system experts. We've been installing and servicing these systems for almost 30 years. We've worked with small churches, large churches, and all those in between. We handle all major brands like Mackey, Crown, JBL, PV's Architectural Acoustics, EAW, Shure, DVX, Behringer, and Audio Technica, just to name a few. We have a full service repair shop and free evaluation and estimates. So give us a call today and we'll get the job done. Wells Turner Family Pharmacy is a proud supporter of local city and county athletics. You can keep your money right here in Coleman because Wells Turner Family Pharmacy is locally owned and operated. At Wells Turner, you won't have to wait long to get your prescriptions filled, but while you're here, you can send a package by UPS, buy a gift in the gift shop, pay your phone bill, or develop your photos using our DKS photo kiosk. Wells Turner Family Pharmacy. We are a Health Mart Community Pharmacy.
Hello and welcome back to the 2014 Candidate Forum for the Republican primary on June 3rd. Today we're speaking on the issues related to the state Senate race. Candidates for that race are Paul Busman and Bruce Whitlock, and Bruce Whitlock has chosen not to attend the forum today. Uh, we'll continue with questions with Mr. Busman. Uh, how will you respond to overcrowding and allegations of abuse in Alabama's prisons? Well, the first thing is, is there's no excuse for abuse in the prison system. Uh, I understand these people are in prison, but they should have a safe environment to live. Uh, and it should be a safe environment from guards and, and the administration that's in that, in that prison. So, so to start off, that's, that's unacceptable and, and, and will we'll be fixed by the legislature if it's not fixed, uh, you know, by the uh, commission on prisons. Uh, the other problem that we've got is we've got overcrowding. And many years ago, for the last 25 years, uh, we've refused to build prisons. And so now we have prisons that are, are way overcrowded, 180, 190 percent capacity. Uh, you've got no technology in the prisons. You've got an increased number of, of violent offenders in the prisons. Uh, and it's a dangerous situation. You know, I, was, I had the opportunity to tour one of the prisons this summer, uh, and it was a scary environment. I mean, you walked into the prison. I went in with the warden and the, uh, and the, the commissioner of prisons, and you know, there was four guards and there was 300 inmates. Uh, and I, I looked over at the, at the commissioner, I said, you're not in charge of this prison, are you? He goes, absolutely not. Uh, you know, the prisoners are, are controlling the prison. And, and my concern is that, that at some point we're going to have a guard get hurt, we're going to have a guard that gets killed, or we're going to have a couple guards that get killed. And so we've got to address this issue. And I think that uh, working with Cam Ward like I have, uh, I think we're going to address that issue. We're going to have to look at sentencing requirements. You know, at, there's a time where you want to put everybody in jail. Uh, you know, the, the problem with that is legislators get cold feet and say, well, if we don't do that, then people are going to accuse us of being soft on crime. Uh, but the problem comes that we've got too many people in the prisons that possibly don't need to be there. Uh, you know, we've got some areas where we can bring nonviolent offenders out, put them in minimum security, and put them to work. Uh, and that relieves some of the burden on us. Uh, the other thing is we're going to have to bite the bullet at some point. We're going to have to build another prison. Uh, you know, when you've got prisoners that are in bunk beds stacked on top of each other that are two feet apart with no air conditioning, and uh, you're going to have problems. I mean, that's just natural uh, human nature. You're going to have problems. Do I get concerned about that a lot? No. I mean, they're in prison. I understand that. But the federal government does not like that at all. And the problem we're going to have is the federal government is going to come in here at some point and say, release X number of prisoners, and we don't get to choose who they are. It's whoever's next on the list gets to be released, and they could do like California where they released 5,000 prisoners, and I don't think we want that at all. Has there been any discussions about using contract uh, prisons? I think there's always discussions on that. Uh, you know, the, the things that I look at are, are do we have the opportunity to have uh, work uh, done by these prisoners, people that are nonviolent offenders? You know, why can't they be maintaining our highways? Why can't they be living at home and, and coming to the sheriff's office on, on Monday through Friday uh, and the sheriff calls Holly Pond or Fairview or something like that and says, look, we've got 50 prisoners that are coming to your, to your area. We need to have work for them to do. I bet you they could do a whole lot of work for these small communities and get a lot of stuff done that we need to get done to make Alabama a better place. Uh, but to just leave them sitting in a, in a prison, uh, and, you know, we call that uh, criminal college because the, the nonviolent offenders learn from the violent offenders how to act, and they get out of prison, and then they do, you know, the crazy things that, that – they were, they were trained to do in, in prison. So we, we've got to segregate that population and make sure we don't make people worse coming out of prison than they were going into prison. That's true. Uh, the next subject would be the Alabama State Employee Pension. Uh, what needs to be done to improve the system to protect retired workers and also make it a more stable program? Well, I think that's one of the other big problems that we've got financially is we've got a pension plan that is, that is way underfunded. I think I saw yesterday uh, the Alabama pension and retirement system is 66 percent funded. Uh, that means we don't have enough money to pay our retirees that we promised to pay. Now, will that get better? I, I certainly hope so. Uh, one of the problems we've had is the RSA organization that protects that pension uh, has not done very well on their investments. Uh, you know, when you compare them to other uh, investment portfolios across the country, they've done rather poorly. Uh, and so we've encouraged them to, to start making better investments. Uh, you know, we've got they've got a tremendous number of investments in the state. They, they uh, have the Robert Trent Jones golf courses. They have many uh, TV stations. They have many newspapers. A lot of those things aren't, aren't money makers. 
uh, and, and the pension plan is there to make money and, and their responsibility is to generate as much money off their investments as they can. Otherwise the state, your tax dollars and my tax dollars have to beef that up. And when we do that, that takes money out of our general fund, that takes money out of our education system. Uh, so we've encouraged RSA to, to look at their investment portfolio and, and start making investments that are, that are going to help us instead of hurt us. And over the last two years, I think they've done that, and their, their investment numbers are starting to move up, and I think that will improve. The uh, next question will be uh, on the overreach of the federal government. Uh, what can the state Senate do on that issue? Well, we've had that constantly for the last four years. Uh, you know, it started, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's my opinion that, that President Obama has just decided to, to do what he wants to do, irregardless of what the Constitution says he can do. Uh, you know, he's put EPA on, on business, uh, he's tried to limit guns, he's tried to shove health care down our throat. Uh, and so the states are going to have to step back and say, you know, we ha that's all right. Uh, when it comes to guns and when it comes to health care, when it comes to EPA, when it comes to education, those are our rights to decide. And, and so we have certain rights in the Constitution and, and we fully expect to back those up. Uh, you know, in the last four years, we've, we've passed extensive immigration reform. We've passed probably some of the strongest gun laws in the country. Uh, we've avoided Medicaid expansion. All those things are pushbacks to the federal government's overreach. Uh, now, are they going to be successful in the long run? We hope so. Uh, we hope that we can get a, a Congress or a Senate that is, that is uh, more state friendly and more personal rights friendly. Uh, and hopefully this next election will will have that happen. But if not, then I think it's our responsibility to protect our citizens from the from the federal government telling us what to do when they have no right to do that. Okay, we're going to take another commercial break, and when we come back, we'll have closing remarks. Uh, today, again, we're speaking with uh, Senator Paul Busman on the state senate race. Uh, stay with us. Pro Audio and Video has the video security systems to cover all of your home and business concerns. Wired, wireless, indoor or out, we've got you covered. Standard and high def cameras, day and night vision, and remote pan tilt zoom cameras are also available. Whether you need a small four camera system or a larger 30 camera system, we've got the one you need. Remote viewing from your home computer, smartphone, and iPad is also available. Whether home or business, call Baker Pro Audio and Video today for your free quote. 256-739-0388. Wells Turner Family Pharmacy is a proud supporter of local city and county athletics. You can keep your money right here in Coleman because Wells Turner Family Pharmacy is locally owned and operated. At Wells Turner, you won't have to wait long to get your prescriptions filled, but while you're here, you can send a package by UPS, buy a gift in the gift shop, pay your phone bill, or develop your photos using our DKS photo kiosk. Wells Turner Family Pharmacy. We are a Health Mart Community Pharmacy. Overwhelmed by home refinancing offers from telephone solicitors and direct mail advertising and then find you're not qualified for a specific plan? The Mortgage Center, a hometown lender, compares the rates from all home loan lenders and the qualifications of the various government programs to find a plan best suited to you. The Mortgage Center helps Coleman County people purchase and refinance their homes. This is Pat Moody. Call us today and let us tailor a loan program to your specific needs and requirements. As a local auto owner's independent agency, we are dedicated to assisting you in your time of need. We live and work right in your community, and we're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Fortunately, emergencies don't happen every day, but when they do, we're here to personally see you through. For life, home, car, and business insurance, call us, your local independent auto owner's agent today.
Hello and welcome back. This is our final segment of the 2014 Candidate Forum for the Republican primary on June 3rd. Uh, again, today we're speaking with State Senator Paul Busman about issues related to that race. And uh, uh, this will be the segment for closing remarks. So, Mr. Busman. Well, the, the one thing that I would like to say is, you know, four years ago when you sent me to Montgomery, uh, you asked me to do several things. You asked me to, to take care of immigration. You asked me to protect Second Amendment rights. You asked me to, to protect pro-life. Uh, the right to life. Uh, you asked me to, to make conservative budgets and you asked me to help education. And so over the last four years, that's exactly what I've tried to do. Uh, you know, we've passed immigration reform, we've passed gun control, we've, had, we've passed more pro-life legislation than any legislature uh, in the history of Alabama. Uh, we brought more money into Coleman for roads and bridges, uh, not because we, we were treated special, because that's what we deserved and that's what I fought for. And so my goal is to make sure we protect our district, make sure our district is treated fairly just like any other district, and make sure that we do the things we're supposed to do. And those are provide budgets that are acceptable and, and honest, uh, provide budgets that are reasonable, uh, and to prevent any kind of proration in our school systems anymore. And, and so right now we have not had proration in the last four years, and we don't intend to have proration again. So that's what you asked me to do. That's what I went and did, and, and I will continue to do the same thing my door's always been open. I've tried to be open and honest with anybody. We may not always agree, um, but at least I'll, I'll sit down and talk to you about those issues. Thank you. Good Glad luck. to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Again, this has been the 2014 Candidate Forum for the Republican primary, and the primary is on June 3rd. So begin now to make your plans to vote in the June 3rd primary. I want to thank uh, Channel 2 for allowing me the, this opportunity and remind you also that today's forum and the others are available for viewing on channel2coleman.com and on YouTube. Thank you and God bless you.